I normally say you can cheerlead after the click. You can show how impressed you were after the click. But if you have to cheerlead to get the dog up to the click, then you are asking, you're, you're being greedy. You're trying to get too much too soon. I might be a little guilty of doing this, talking while I'm in a training session. You know, a little bit of cheerleading. We talked about silence in training during a recent discussion, and we had to talk about it because, well, this is a podcast. This is the Learning About Dogs podcast. I'm Sue McGuire, the manager of a canine behavior program at a small nonprofit animal shelter near San Francisco. And joining me is Kay Lawrence of Learning About Dogs. Do we chit chat too much when we're training? Let's talk about that. Silence. <laughs> silence meaning I don't know what to do or silence is, oh, that's good. Because if you had it wrong, I would tell you. Yeah, see that um, it's probably good for a whole other episode, but silence, how do, I mean, silence can be confirmation. It can be nerve Yeah, I mean, but at the same time. you can walk in silence alongside somebody and it can be companionable. Or you can walk in silence alongside somebody and it can be excruciating. What's the difference? They're both silence. Well, I don't know. Well, and do you get the impression from the other person's body language that this silence is comfortable or this silence is not comfortable? And it depends what's happened first. You know, so there's there's quite a lot of interview techniques in hostile situations where silence is deliberately used to cause the other person to fill the vacuum. Well, I... I... I've never done that. You might have been on the receiving end of it. I don't know. Um, so I see that quite a lot in when people are doing free shaping. Their silence, the dogs often like sitting there wagging their tail going, um, I, I don't know what's happening here. Um, so I'll just, just just turn my head a bit. Oh, goodness me, she's happy at that. Fine. Okay, whatever. But it, it's it's a little bit like a pressured silence to, I'm not going to do something. You're going to have to resolve this. Or, um, I mean, this emerged because we were trying to make a video of the, the some of my students doing some training. And because I was standing over the top of the camera, I couldn't give them feedback on what they were doing. So one of the girls was doing something. She finished a bit. She came and sat down by the others. They swapped over, got dogs. And as they were swapping over, they said to her, oh, you gave the wrong cue for whatever it was. And she said, no, I didn't because Kay didn't say anything. And then I realized that I probably do the same with the dog. So if they're doing something, like I've asked the dog to walk backwards and he goes sideways, when I would have clicked the behavior, I've already interrupted it to stop it getting as far as the point where they're expecting feedback. So say I've asked the dog to go sideways and he starts going backwards. I don't wait until he's hit his mat <laughs> 12 feet away and then I go that's not right. I'm not going to click it because he's completed 12 foot of a behavior that I might want later on. So the minute I ask for him to go sideways, but he actually goes backwards, I would interrupt that and go, oh, no, no, let's start again. You got this one wrong. I need to set it up. I need to change it. We're doing something different. So if he's going backwards and I say nothing, then he is right. So for me, that silence means they're right, but I'm probably standing in such a way that I'm engaged in what they're doing with the sort of face that goes, wow, you got this right. Wow. And there's the click. You've done it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of competition work uh, in obedience, we have to do heel work silently. Well, if you taught heel work when you're right, I'm going to be talking and I'm going to tell you how fantastic that is. And, oh, you're super. And, oh, that's lovely. Good, good, good boy. Going silent under those conditions can absolutely kill it because the dog's expecting you to give feedback all the way through on a continuous basis. That's how you get duration. No, you don't. You shouldn't. If you can only get duration by propping the behavior up, then you actually haven't taught the behavior at all. The behavior then only exists because we're propping it up and continually telling the dog to continue doing it. So I would teach heel work and I will walk in such a way when the dog's got it right that I'm probably walking happy, which doesn't mean I'm drunk. It just means I'm quite happy with how you're going here. And the dog doesn't need me to keep saying, oh, that's great, because she doesn't have to say anything to tell me that she's happy with that. Yes, they're used to me not talking, but looking 
I don't know, being animated, being comfortable the way that we're walking together. I don't need to say anything once I've started doing heel work. So what often then happens when people go into competition, they may talk to their dog during practice. Now they can walk in such a way where they don't need to talk, but they go into competition situation and they walk like they're walking off a plank. You know, it's it's completely shut down. Their, their shoulders are somewhere up around their ears. Their knees are locked together. You can see the muscles in their bottom are just like clenched tight because they're waiting for everything to go wrong. And then the dog's going, I don't like the look of this one thing. <laughs> and the dog's behavior just drains mm-hmm. straight mm-hmm. out through their feet because that sort of silence is, look out, there's trouble coming. And, and dogs are designed to pick this up. Mm-hmm. I, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around it. So I'm going to just take my brain and loop it back to when I'm teaching the dog. Um, I have made it uh, easy learning. They're on their way. And then I don't need to chit chat. You should never chit chat through the process in the first place. That's what I think. So if, if, you're, if your process yeah. needs I, I, you I, to continually verbally talk them through it, you're trying to go too far too soon. By all means, Good. sorry. Yeah, that's somebody asked. Somebody asked me the other day. Uh, I was coaching a team, and somebody was asking me the other day about. I know I shouldn't be cheerleading, but what else Smile. can I do? <laughs> it's you know <laughs> yes. You, you, I normally say you can cheerlead after the click. You can show how impressed you were after the mm-hmm. click. But if you have to cheerlead to get the dog up to the click, then you are asking. You're you're being greedy. You're trying to get too much too soon. You know, you can see people, I can walk down the street with my dog on a, you know, we're walking in time with each other. They have a sniff. I have a stop while they have a sniff. Nobody has to cheerlead and say, oh, you're fantastic. This is great. Let's keep going. Slap their leg and all the rest of it. You can, that companionable silence is fine. That connection as a reinforcer is absolutely fine. We don't need to be verbal to be able to be connected. Mm-hmm. I think the most uh, eye-opening incident I saw you train was with Prime, and he you were working one of your routines, and he kept at you. It was during one of your Game of Thrones routines, and he kept looking at you. And I have to admit, Kate, it startled me because you said, uh-uh, no, that's not it. And I went, ah, and then you stopped. And I went, and it was eye-opening for me to say, you can tell your dog that that's not quite right. Let's try but then it, it goes to you to say, I, I can't do the same thing again. I need to change the contingencies. Yeah, yeah. But I think we should yeah. have, you know, you have a term over the States called a cease and desist. I'm not exactly sure what it means, yes. but Please yeah, <laughs> you know, we, we become hostage to too. positive training in such a way that we feel we can never say to the dogs, no, that's not right. We absolutely need to have a way of saying, at this moment in time, that is not the behavior that's going to earn you reinforcement. So if I'm in the middle of eating my dinner and Merrick wants to sit on my head, at this moment in time, that's a no, no. No, that's not going to happen. Oh, she says, but I love you. And you always let me do what I want because you're a positive trainer. And I'm going, I might do, but right at the moment, I want to drink my tea and have a cup of, you know, have my dinner. So no, you can't do this at that time. Oh, it doesn't mean never. It just means at this time, That is not the behavior that's acceptable or going to get reinforcement or go do something else instead. And finding a way to be able to teach that is probably the first thing we teach when we have people come to classes. I I call it blocking. You know, so if, if you've got a puppy that wants to have this continual assurance and reinforcement off you, that's fine when it's appropriate, when you have time for it. But if you're holding a cup of coffee, that's not an appropriate behavior. And you'd be able to say, not right now. No, no. Not scream at them, you know, to frighten the kids off. But just be able to say to them, I still love you, but no, no, not right now. Oh, okay. And we teach that with food. <laughs> so if I put my hand up like, um, you know, the standard stay cue, the palm of my hand is facing the dog. When I've taught the puppies, if I put that up, a piece of food comes out between my thumb and finger. Yes. Oh, wow. How should you do that? The other hand is behind it, flicking food out. So my hand, I show the palm of my hand to the puppy. She's coming towards me. Oh, there's food on the floor. Wow. So they get very used to just coming to a stop if they see my hand facing them. 
and they don't get coffee all over their head. Just as equally if the Gordon Setter wants to sit on my lap when I'm eating, it's a no-no. So we have a verbal cue which says, no, no, not right now, and a hand signal which means, no, no, not right now. But it's not no, never. It's not never, and it's not necessary. Uh, it it's, should not have this punishing element to it. It's just not now. No, exactly. We're not trying to say this behavior should never exist. It's just information that at the moment this behavior is, you know, let me give you some advice. It's probably going to get you into trouble. And if we cannot have that management information without it offending the dog, this is where we become painted into a corner. You know, you, you put paint on the floor and now you can't get out. I remember painting the staircase. So I have a painted staircase <laughs> and I sat and thought about this for a good week before I thought it's going to take 24 hours to dry. How the hell am I going to paint the staircase and still be able to live in the house? And then I thought about it. I painted oh, the alternate sure. stairs. <laughs> I just had to remember which ones I painted. So I know I only painted 50% either one side. I think I painted every other tread. But I needed to be able to get up and down the staircase one way. So same as if you're living with dogs, at some point in time, you will need to have to say, not now. Just the same as if you're crossing the road, the dog says, oh, look, a dead badger. Can I eat that? You have to say, no, not now. Let's walk on. And it's not leave it. It's not you mustn't. Under those conditions, I've got walk on. Yes, and if my dog's coming towards me and it's going to jump up and hit the cup of coffee, I have a behavior that I want it to do, which is, oh, wait there. Yep, stop there. And then I can reinforce that. Yes, so we, we have to be able to give them a clear idea of what else to do instead. And that, that gives us the, you know, to me, the license to be able to go, yeah, not now. And that I'm, grows with maturity, I assume, because then you could say, or not now, and then, okay, I'm going to go lay on my bed. Or if you had a younger dog, you'd have to back that up with some management of some sort. Yeah. You know, so oh, it, when, if I want to work on the computer, that is not the time for the dogs to be up my elbow because you know what happens. You end up typing up nonsense. Mm -hmm. And I need to concentrate on what I'm doing. But I would like the dogs to be with me, but also not climbing on my lap while I'm trying to work. So under those conditions... When I'm sitting at the computer, she's busy, but I've also prepared a box of old bits of kitchen rubbish for you to play with on the floor. And I'll tip that all on the floor. And she goes, oh, cool. So when she sits at the computer, I don't want to go anywhere near her. I'm going to play with all this stuff out here. So we give the dogs something else to do when we're busy. And then over time, and I can see her doing it now, she'd come and stand in <laughs> the doorway, mm -hmm. have a look at me sitting at the computer sigh and go back out in the garden again yeah. yep so yeah, she's yes she's locked herself up. in that little room again and <laughs> <she's okay. laughs> yep. and i guess i'll sit here and have my chew <laughs> and not bother her for a couple hours oh no there's no chew now no you just got to go in the garden and watch the birdies okay <laughs> yeah yeah oh you're so hard <laughs> Terrible, terrible. I, 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 but I do think it's an important discussion to have, especially when people are so wrapped up into, oh, no, it's the myth of no, you can never say no. Um, well, it depends. Saying that. But that comes back to the very first thing you said. Like, if I say sit, I don't want to have to bother say wait there and give it treats. Sit means sit until I say else what. What's the reason behind why you're asking for that behavior so if a dog's doing something like um you're busy watching television and they've gone nosing in the cupboard to try and pull something out of it and you scream no across the room what's the function behind you saying no is to startle them into not doing it and you're a bad dog and you shouldn't do that again or they're about to pee in the house and you scream no to stop them doing it those are not the conditions which mean not now <laughs> that's that's not what you mean that is never ever do that again so if you're trying to use no to mean you never then you're in trouble really we haven't managed the environment we haven't set up the dog to be successful but if i'm crossing the road and the dog starts to go for a pee i'm going to have to go oh no come on hold on for a minute you've only got another six paces to go and you'll hit a piece of grass you know so it's it's the difference between no hold it for a moment do something else right now it's not meaning never. And that scream that means you never do that. You shouldn't do that. I don't like you. And whatever you're doing, you should be so frightened. You shouldn't do it again. So it comes back to what, why you're saying what you're saying, not what you're saying. 
why you're saying what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So why am I saying no? I don't mean you can never do it. I just mean at the moment, that's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. And that's your obligation as having these yeah. animals yeah. in our lives. Yeah. yeah. Hey, sorry about a few little technical glitches on that recording. Not sure what was happening. Sometimes it's amazing that we managed to record clear across the pond with each other. So, hey, we're pretty impressed by that. Well, thanks for listening. For more information and great articles, check out learningaboutdogs.com. I wanted to tell you about a couple of courses that are coming up that you might want to check into. There's an eight-lesson online course called Clean Training, and that's going to start on August 14th. And then Kay is going to be offering a six-lesson online course on Q technology. That's going to start uh, September 18th, all on learningaboutdogs.com. For people who live in the San Francisco Bay Area, I'm teaching a series of classes based on the Living and Learning with Dogs model. And those classes are held through the Humane Society of Sonoma County in Santa Rosa, about an hour north of San Francisco. And the website is Humane Society of Sonoma County. You can just Google it. One of the best ways to help support this podcast is to rate and review us on iTunes. And thanks for listening.